Yo, what's up? Welcome to the Smart Couple podcast and show here on Wednesday. Let's dive in, and I hope you guys are well. This question is about parenting. So this is uh, for you guys that are parents or one day might be parents and you've got a partner. There can be a lot here. This is, this is an intense one. Um, from Christina in South Florida. What's up, Christina? How can I approach my husband with concerns about how he treats our child? Right? How can I approach my husband about how he treats our kid? And here's a little backstory. My husband's parents have told me in the past, and to them it's funny, about how harsh they were with him as a baby and a young child. This might explain why when our newborn has meltdowns, he sometimes gets frustrated to the point of telling her to shut up and at times handling her a little rougher than I feel comfortable with. I understand where my husband is coming from, given his past, but I refuse to allow my daughter to grow up with that kind of treatment or to let her be his experiment as he learns how to manage his hurt and frustration. Well, awesome. Good for you, Christina. Sounds really wise. And here's the key words Christina is using. I refuse to allow my daughter to grow up with that kind of treatment. So here's the thing with the word refuse. If it's true that you refuse to allow this, That's called a non-negotiable need. And it's a need about your partner. You know, it's a need about safety. Look, I need to feel safe here, honey. And I need you to parent in a way that is not um, aggressive, violent, etc. That's a need, and I will not flinch on that. So that means you've got to go to therapy. You've got to do some um, past you know, emotional work on your past, some trauma work perhaps, to get to the point where you can tolerate our daughter's uh, upset, her tantrums, her tears, her frustration. Now, this is really the same in a partnership, that we need to treat each other with respect or the safety meters go off and we don't feel safe and then we can't open up to our partner. So, you know, it's the same deal. So, Christina, I really like your, what feels like a boundary here, And you got to really stand in it if it's true that you refuse and not flinch. Now, here's the thing. If you refuse to not allow this and you make it a non-negotiable need, your guy may um, decide to leave you and be like, this doesn't work. And this might put a wedge that's really unresolvable between the two of you. And you've got to decide if you're willing to have that be one consequence potentially of you stepping deeper into your non-negotiable need here. And the other, the downside of that, of course, is that now you're living apart in two separate homes. You're going to share custody, perhaps, uh, unless he gets reported, because that's almost like um, if he's handling her rough in a certain way, you can actually call social services and, you know, uh, they would come investigate. Regardless, because um, that could be considered child abuse. Regardless, you, when you stand in this, he's like, no way. Now you're sharing custody. Now at his house, he's going to do what he does. And you know, he may not ever go to therapy. He may never look at the, his past. He may never get his emotions in check. And now uh, your daughter is dealing with this anyway, at least half of the time. And then she comes to your house and you're dealing with her kindly and gently. And you're creating a safe space at your house for her to be raised in. But then she goes to her dad's and uh, it's a different story. So this is pretty common in a relationship and different parenting styles. When one person is unwilling to change their parenting style uh, or look at all their triggers that result in you know intense parenting techniques like shaking or being rough with a child, um, you know, because you and I both know kids are going to be kids. My kids threw insane tantrums when they were little. And especially when they're infants, and there was one particular time where my daughter, I was up, I'd been up basically all night. She was not a great sleeper. And I was, felt like I was going mad, right? It'd been like two years of bad sleep. And that adds up. Sleep deprivation really adds up. And I just lost it, but I didn't lose it on her. I, I think I set my daughter down and I could fortunately tagged out with my wife. I had enough wits about me. And I went outside basically in the middle of the night and I threw a tantrum myself so that I could deal with my emotional rage and expression. 
that way in a safe place. And then I could come back in and like be resourced. Right. So there was a few times uh, early on when my kids were very young where their emotions were like a, uh, knife sticking right inside the place where it hurt me the most. And for me, it represented a place that I hadn't, um, healed as a kid. And my parents were similar, um, in that they, they just couldn't handle my emotional expressions and they did their thing to try to deal with me. And this is what parents do, right? You, you reach your emotional threshold and you basically, you hit your ceiling of tolerance and then you act out and your acting out could be leaving and slamming the door. It could be shaking your child. It could be hitting your child. It could be screaming, um, a number of ways, but it doesn't do anything except traumatize the kid and hurt them in such a way that they're going to not feel safe around you. And then they're going to grow up and have lots of issues. So, um, this is intense stuff. And, uh, so keep putting your foot down, Christina, stand in yourself and make sure that you make that a non-negotiable need. Now, if you're with a good guy, he is going to come around. He's going to be like, I know this is so intense for me. I've got to take a look at this. This is so crazy making the sound of her voice. It pierces me in a certain way. Great. Go do some EMDR on that. Go do some brain spotting, go do some somatic experiencing, go do whatever you need to do trauma therapy wise to deal with that sound or yourself in relationship to your kid so that you don't hurt your kid and then lose your partner. You know what I'm saying? So stay on this, stay on this one for your daughter's sake, if not for you. And because I have kids, obviously I really care about this conversation. Um, and I've had to really work my own issues and stuff from my past to be able to parent in the way that I do in parent well and parent with integrity. And yes, I sometimes raise my voice and yes, I get triggered and yes, all that stuff happens, but I've got tools. I've got a partner I can tag out with. I've got a partner who will call me out on this kind of behavior. Honey, that's not okay. I don't like the way you're talking to him or her. We want to be open to that kind of feedback from our spouse, right? Um, okay, so honor that sensitivity and take good care of yourself and your daughter. Yeah, if you're with a good dude, he'll come around, All right? All right, there you have it, guys. Join the free relationship web class, jasongaddis.com slash summer, right, to get the Relationship School's basic download on what we're teaching here and what we're about. All right, come join the fun. You only have a couple days left to get on the replay, right? And it's going to be an awesome, awesome class. So check it out. I also want you, if you're serious and you want to learn this stuff, you can go to jasongaddis.com slash roots to apply for group coaching and other teaching that happens in a smaller group setting for very committed people. jasongaddis.com slash roots if you want to come join the fun there to the growing community of folks who are finally learning this stuff, all right? That includes parents, non-parents, single folks, married folks, divorced folks, doesn't matter what your deal is. All we care about is that you want to learn this stuff that you never learned in school, okay? Awesome. Take care, and we'll talk soon.